Well, welcome to the crosswalk. <laughs> I ain't used to this. I'm new to the camera thing. Welcome to the crosswalk. We're glad you're here. Where we preach the cross yes. and that alone. Jesus Amen. Christ is crucified is an answer, and that's the answer for the world. For Amen. the church, for every one of us. Yes. Yes. nothing else. That's, that's it. That's, that's what he did. The whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation is about Jesus Christ and the Christ. Amen. The blood was in the beginning. Yes. The blood is at the end. So it's, it's <laughs> all in between. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise anyway, God. getting back to what I was saying before the camera was on was some Sunday school is not taught. They're not, they're not teaching right things because they don't know the message of the cross. We're not better than anyone else, but we're better equipped. My brother Christ says. Amen. We're better equipped. We know. That's right. Where our blessings come from and the things of God come from. The only place where they come from is through our faith in the cross. Amen. Amen. Uh, if you would turn to John chapter 15. I think you will come up here and preach a little bit. Come on, brother. Yeah, you always get nervous up here. It's just, but if you ain't nervous, there's something wrong. It's the yeah. word of God. It's the greatest, yeah. the greatest word, the greatest book on the earth right here. Because it points you to the living word. It points you to the answer. Man, your inner man needs this. Mm -hmm. your, whole, your whole being needs this. Yes, we do. What's in this book? Because it's going to lead you to the one. Well, let me get my notes out because the Lord knows my scatterbrain will go all over the place. I'll go down every rabbit trail. Well, let's start with verse 9. John chapter 15, verse 9. Find my spot. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Mm. Continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy, hold up, y'all need to underline this, that my joy might remain in you. Mm. Not just joy, His joy might Ooh. remain in you and that your joy might be full. Let's pray. Mm. Father God, I come to you, Lord, and I ask you, you, you Lord. To, to anoint this vessel, Lord. Yeah, you know Lord. I cannot speak. Lord. You know I cannot think straight at the time, yeah. Lord, but you can use anybody, Lord. You can use me. You can use anybody to speak your word. And God, I pray that I step out of the way and you step in, Lord. And Lord, you teach, Lord. You teach through me. You speak through me, Lord. I give it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. The other day, I don't remember how long ago it was, but I ministered a word about abiding in the vine. You know, being in the vine. Jesus said, I am the true vine. And I, there was a little bit more I wanted to teach on. I said, Brother Curtis, I always wanted to teach you a little bit more on that. But I never got a chance to. So this is a perfect time to do it. So, amen. The Lord kind of moved on my heart to do this. But he just got through teaching. And I want to set this up right quick. I won't take long, but Jesus is almost to the crucifixion. He's coming into the final hours. And he's looking at his disciples. And he's, he knows what's about to happen. Okay? And he talks about them and he tells them, I am the true vine. You can't, you can't bear fruit outside of me. You, you have to abide in me. Yes. And when you hear the word abide, think of continue. Continue mm -hmm. in me. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. It means to continue. He's saying to them, look, the times are going to get hard, but you need to look to me. They didn't know what was about to happen at the cross. They didn't know what was going to happen. But when it happened, and Jesus came to them and spoke to them, they began to see it. And then they, these words abiding in Him began to make yes. understanding to them. Amen. If I can say it the country way. They started to understand it. They began to understand what He really mm -hmm. meant. When He's saying abide in Me, He's saying don't look anywhere else. That's right. Look to what I am doing. Look to what I'm about to do for mm -hmm. you. My children... I'm about to do something for you that you don't know. The chaos is about to come. This world is about to come at you full force. But abide in me and you shall bear fruit. Yeah, but not yeah, just that. Yeah. He goes on and he says that you abide in my love. And not just that. He says you'll have my joy. And that joy will be full. As Christians, we are not supposed to be sorrowful. 
There's no other way that you can say what joy means, but it means the inner man being glad. Yeah. The inner man being excited and glad. And uh, I like what he says when it, the, the Greek term of uh, where he says full, your, your joy shall be full. We look at that and yeah, it means full. But I like what it says because it, it sounds country to me. Yeah. It says to cram. You ever heard about that? You know, you go on a vacation or something, you tell the kids, hey, cram all that stuff in the car. That's what it's, it's saying. It's, saying you, it's cramming it in something. Woo! It's filling it up. It's Come leveling on. it up. Come the on. Lord doesn't just want you to be joyful. He wants you to be filled uh -huh. with joy. Woo! And the only way that can happen is a, is a right uh, understanding of the cross. Amen. And a right understanding of the Scripture. You can't understand the Scripture unless it's in the light of the cross. That's right. Amen. And I, I, want, I want to explain that. You can go day after day reading the Scripture and you can have a mindset of law. And we know that in this house. Is that you can have a mindset of law and not have joy. That's right. <laughs> we know people. I, we've been there. Me and my brother Randall, we've been there. We've been to churches where we were in the law. And there was no joy. Yeah, we had Scripture, but the Scripture was not the way the Scripture was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. It wasn't in light of the cross. Yeah. It was in light of law. Yeah. It was in a mindset of law. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this because I have to do this to appease a God. No. No, I'm doing this because of what He's done for me at Calvary. I'm doing this because He's won the victory yeah. oh, at Calvary. Yeah. Now I can abide in His love because His love pushes me. Yes. As my faith is in Calvary, I am living by love. And I am not living no more by, oh, I gotta do this because I got a peace of God. No, I'm I'm reading my Bible. I'm praying because I love Thank the you. Lord. Thank I you. love what He does yes. for me. Yes. And I love Him so much I want to know more yes. about it. Amen. Amen. Yes. That's it. That's why you see people shouting in church. Amen. That's why you see people raising their hands, mm -hmm. young people. Mm. Man, there was a lot. There was a time where I was sit there and I was ashamed to raise my hand in church. I was ashamed to sing a song in church. But when Jesus came in, come on. When Jesus did come the work on. in my my soul, man, it, it wasn't nothing to sit there and say, "I love you, Lord." <laughs> when you see me close my eyes, stuff ain't nothing going on me. I just want to talk to Jesus. That's it. I just don't want to see nobody else. I just want to. I just want to thank hey, the Lord while the music's playing. I want to get my mind on the Lord and Thanks, what He's done man. for me. Because His joy just starts flowing. Yeah. And that everything He has for me just starts flowing. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm keep myself on track. Sorry, guys. <coughs> True joy comes from learning and knowing all that the cross has afforded us. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you read your Bible. Yeah. It's, I'm, it's, it's not the law. Look, how do I say this? When when you put your faith in Calvary, right? And you, you realize what Jesus has mm -hmm. done for you. You need to learn everything that He's done for you. Amen. You need to learn how to tell people what He's done for yes. you. You need to learn how to tell Christians what He's done for you at the cross. Amen. 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 Reading of the Word is, is there's nothing wrong with reading. Now, if you put it where you I'm reading the Bible to, if I don't read this, I'm not gonna have. Victor over the sin. That's wrong. That's wrong. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm happy because I'm saved. Think about that. What I just said. It says, true joy comes from learning and knowing what the Lord has afforded us at the cross. Yeah. Think about what the Lord has yeah. done for you. Yeah. He saved you. He forgave you. He, he has made you in a relationship with God Almighty. You're in a relationship with the Lord. Woo. Do you understand that? Yes. We, we take these things and we, we don't really Tell think about this. Do you understand what the Lord has opened up through the cross? He has opened up the door wide. Woo. The door is wide. I'm going to be honest with you. I believe that you are where you are in your relationship with God because of you. Let, let me let me let me make this make sense of that. You put your faith in Calvary, right? You put your faith in the cross, and the door has been opened wide. He said you can come to the throne room boldly. Yeah. yeah. It's not it's not a law to go pray, folks. Uh -uh. It's not a law to go and preach your Bible. 
unless you have the attitude of you're appeasing God by that. You have to do this to Come have on. this favor. No, you have this favor in His Son. Amen. But the door has been opened wide for a relationship with Him. That's right. Are you communing with God? Are you learning of the cross? Come on. Come on. Amen. I'm guilty of this. I sit here and I sit in a pew and I listen to the cross and I'm like, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. And the Holy Spirit will convict me to pick up my Bible and read and learn of Him Amen. and to pray. And I would say, I would use my own flesh and say, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm still believing. Yes, I'm believing the cross, but the Holy Spirit is trying to do something in your life. Yes. He's trying to speak Amen. to you. Amen. Amen. That's the relationship part of the, of the, yes, of the Christian amen. walk. Amen. Come on. I enjoy because He's teaching me the way. He's teaching me the, the way every day. This this come, Most of us has come out of some, some other church. Some other uh, teaching that is not of God. Amen. Okay? A lot of us. And we, it takes time for that to be taken out of us. Because we try to apply it to the cross, and you can't apply that. I did that with oneness. I tried to apply it to the cross. It won't work. It won't work. Throw it out. The, the way of the cross, putting your faith in Him alone and what He's done for everything you have need of, is the way. Everything out, throw it out. Amen. Come on. I have joy because He's teaching me that. He's, the Bible says that grace teaches us to deny ungodliness. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen. I have joy because I'm going to see Jesus no matter what happens on this earth. Amen. You know, we get... I'm talking about our joy just for a minute. The joy that we have because of the cross. Yeah. I want to talk to you just for a minute. I'm just being from Ooh. my heart. It's we have a lot of stuff that is coming upon us because we're not looking to the cross. We think we're looking to the cross, but we're not. But a situation comes up and we try to do something good and we'll make up for that bad we've done. We don't realize we're doing that. Yep. Or we try to go and we try to pray it away or whatever. And we don't realize that the Lord's trying to convict us of something. And just the world, some of the things of the world. Anyways, but no matter what happens on this earth, I know where I'm going. Yeah. We have joy because of that. Don't you realize it? I mean, no matter what happens in this world, no matter what comes on the news, no matter what someone tries to tell you, oh, the world's coming to an end. The world's coming to an end. It's, it's been coming to an end. Jesus is coming back soon, and I, that's what I'm looking for. I don't care about the government. I don't care about what's going on. Look, I'm praying about that. I want a good government. I want to live in a good government. I don't want to see my kids hurt. I don't want to see the things that I love being stripped away. But I'm going to tell you something right now, that my joy is in the Lord. Tell no matter what comes, what goes, I know He loved me because He died for me. He paid the price for me. He opened the door of everything He has for me through Calvary. I have all that, and I don't have to worry about the news. You know, the news pops up on my phone, I just swipe it away. I don't need to hear that. I know it's the same old story. Fear tactics, fear tactics, fear tactics. Fear. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Everything's coming against us. Everything's coming against the Christians. But I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says that He's going to build His church upon a rock. Uh -huh. And the gates of hell Woo! shall not prevail against the church, right? It doesn't matter what's going on in, in the White House. It doesn't matter what's going on. We're going to pray about that. You are supposed to pray about that. Lift that up to, to the Lord. But don't let it get you down in the mully grubs. Yeah. And let you get depressed yeah. where you're walking and you're going Come around on. at work and you're like, oh, man. Somebody goes and just says one thing to you and you're like, oh. You're just jumping all over people. You know why? Because your focus is not right. Tell it. You need to be looking at what the Lord has done for you. Amen. And when you look to what the Lord has done for you, your joy is going to be full. Your joy is going to be your joy is going to be overflowing. Amen. Amen. It's because you got your, you got your eyes off just for a second. Pull them back. Put them on the Lord. Put them That's on what He's right. done for you. Get your mind on what he, what Jesus has done That's for you, right. and you're going to be flowing. Non-stop. He's teaching me this. Have I got there yet? Ask my wife. No, don't ask my wife. It's not fair. It's not fair. She'll tell you the truth. That's why it's not fair. Praise God. Lord is teaching me some things. It's like Thank you, Lord. I'll be sitting there and I will I'll get mad about something. I just get 
want to have a portion about something. And it's like Brother Curtis taught one time. It's like the Lord just spoke to him and said, it's irrelevant. We're sitting here. I'm just getting so mad. Man, I'm saved. Why am I mad? I'm saved. I'm Come on. born again. I'm not in darkness. I'm in light. Come on. The Lord is showing me every day. I wake right. up. I go outside and I look at the sun. I'm like, yeah. my God right. made that sun. The Come one that's on. in my in my right. being. Come the on. Holy Spirit. He's the one that made that Woo. sun. Those birds that are chirping. I don't have that's a reason right. to be sad. Right. I don't care if the whole world's falling apart. I know where I'm going. Right. Man, yeah, you let yeah, this world get you down. Lord, Lord. And it gets you so down that you're a bad example to everyone else yeah. as a Christian. Yeah. Amen, brother. Amen. That's, Amen. That's preaching to myself. That's preaching to myself. Not just y'all. I'm preaching to myself. I, I, I've been there. That's why I can tell you about it. Amen. Amen. The world can't have this joy. Uh -huh. Listen, yeah. they can have excitement. They can have excitement over a new toy or whatever. Pleasure for a season. But they can't have the joy of the Lord because He said it was He said it was His joy. Yeah. Let me read it to you again. Yeah. You shall abide in My love even as I have kept My Father's commandment and abide in His love. These things have I spoken to you that, that My joy might remain in you. You can't have the things of Christ unless you look to Calvary That's and right. have everything that He has for you. Even His joy. The world cannot Hallelujah. have this joy that we have until they come to the cross. They have to come to the cross. I'm going to stop for a minute. i got to say this on the side. The Christians, why are we looking to the world for entertainment? Why are we looking to the world for excitement? Come on, your joy is in the cross. Hallelujah. Your joy is in the Lord. Yes. Don't sit there and go find garbage of the Word. It's not going to give you nothing but depression. It's not going to give you nothing but sadness and sorrow. Look to the yeah, Lord. Man. Look to the things Amen. of the Lord to find joy. Amen. You know what? If you get in the Word, you're gonna, you know what? It's going to bring you joy? Because it's going to point you to Calvary. It's going to point you to everything that's been done for you at Calvary. And look, that sounds like a cliche, but man... You can't, you can't fathom everything that's been done there. Uh -uh. Everything that you're, you're afforded through Calvary, you can't imagine it all. That's right. You're yeah. given the love of God that Ooh. you can't even imagine. The, the love of God that you can love someone that is so hateful, so hateful yeah, like, that hates you, you can love them. That's God right. put that love inside of you for them. Look, Jesus, our God, loved us so much that He loved us while we were His enemies. Yes. He died for us. Yes, he did. That is the same love that can be in you. Amen. That is for right. because of the cross and your faith in the cross. The joy that you have that we're speaking today is a joy that when, when Paul and Silas was in prison, yeah. they were being beaten yeah. and in chains. I'm just trying to get somebody excited. I thought yeah. we're Pentecostal. Come on. We're, here. <laughs> we're sitting here and they're over being beaten. We, we read these stories. And we don't really realize what was actually going on. We just look at them as little stories. Right, right. I'm telling you something. They were beaten. They were bleeding. Yeah. They were bruised. They were they were sitting down. Any of us, we have one bad day, and it's all give it all up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I see a lot of angels. Tell right? it now. No, Tell it. we're all been there. Just give it all up. But man, they were sitting in prison, being yeah. beaten in chains. And they sit there and say, you know what? Let's just sing the praises of God. Amen. They just start singing the praises of God, right? Y'all know the story. They sing the praises of God. That's the joy of my Lord. Yeah. That's the joy of the Lord is their strength. Mm. Amen. 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 It's His joy. It's His joy. Praise That's why I like to tell people about Jesus. Yeah. And can I tell you something? I don't get on Facebook a lot because I, I'm not good with my words. And I'm not good with typing words. Okay? But I'll tell you something. Can I give you all a little advice? Logan, you better wake up, boy. Give you a little advice. Everywhere you go, just give them Jesus. Amen. Tell them what He's done for them. That's all you got to do. Yeah. Man, we was fishing the other day. I'm just going to give you an example. Just something out of the blue. We and my buddy Stephen, good Christian friend of mine, Went fishing. Went to the spillway. Man, we was out there. I was, I was just going to go fishing. But I'm going to tell you, this is the way my mind works. Went out there fishing, and this guy, we ran into him. He's over like 
HR John goes, he's like, catch you some striper, he on some spoons, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, man, you know what's wrong with this world? He starts getting racial. And I said, I, I said, let me tell you what's really wrong with this world. He didn't open up a door. And I said, sin's what's wrong with this world. But they need Jesus. Amen. They need what he did for them at the yes. cross. Good. My buddy Stephen just looking back there just got quiet as <laughs> me. And I said, look at that man right there. That man was full of drugs. He was full of drinking. And he's been saved by the blood of Jesus. I said, tell him about Stephen. He's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> man, come on, just tell them about Jesus wherever you go. You got the joy of the Lord in you, right? Amen. Do you have the joy of the Lord in you, or do you have the joy of the sorrow of the world in you? Man, if you look into the cross and you got your faith planted in the cross, I'm telling you something. Your joy should be getting full, but more full and more full. That's a part of the fruit of the Spirit. If you Get ahead of myself. I'm throwing it all together. But Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, he speaks of the fruit of the Spirit. Joy is one of those fruits. Yes, sir. Amen. That is one of those fruits that are, should be being developed in you. That's right. Man, each one of those fruits, man, that's just overwhelming for my mind just to go over. But joy, we should have joy. We should never be sitting here that's right. whining and complaining and griping about every little thing someone does. I'm guilty. But Jesus is working on me. I know where to keep my faith, and I'm Thank trusting God. in Him to take that Thank junk God. out of me. And I'm Thank saying, Lord, I want to be joyful all the time. Amen. I want to be full of joy. Yeah. You ever been around that person that's full of joy? Yes. Brother Craig is one of those people. I don't, understand <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen this man mad. Yes. No, I'm a man. <laughs> but you know what? That man is a joyful man every time I run into him. He blesses me every time I get around him. He bl I got mad at him the other day, and I'm just I can't stay mad at this guy. This guy's just so nice. It's like, oh my goodness, man. Lord, give, give, give me some joy. I want my joy overflowing. Amen. Lord, I ain't there yet, but man, I want to be, I want to go to work and somebody just starts, hey, you know what? You gotta do three changeovers today. You gotta do this, this, and I'm just gonna be like. Praise the Lord! <laughs> 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 I like that. That's if I got to the Lord. I grab the and I'm like having a bad day. And he's like, praise the Lord. I'm like, what's going on with this guy? You know what's going on? The joy of the Lord. Man. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Man, let me read this one scripture. Or if I can find it in my notes. That's why I don't write on Facebook. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 26 I don't know if it's going to pop up behind me or not she going to pop it up there it is, there it is. Yeah. for God give it to a man that is good in his sight there's only one way you can be good in God's sight and that's in his son that's in what his son has done for God give it to a man that is good in his sight, wisdom and yeah. knowledge and joy. Yeah. Listen to this part. This is why the word the world don't have it. But to the sinner he giveth travail yeah. to gather and to heap up that he may give to him that is good before God. This also is vanity and vexation of the spirit. You'll learn that if you read Ecclesiastes. But the way of a sinner is hard. The way of a sinner is travail, chaos. Man, Christians. If you know what Jesus has done for you, and that Spirit is flowing through you, you have no reason to complain, to gripe, to murmur, nothing. Do we do it? Yes. Well, we need to take that to the cross. We need to take that to the cross. Amen? Amen. Man, I want to be full of joy. Amen. I don't want to just... He said He'll give me His joy. That's exciting enough. But He said that your joy might be full. Amen. But the sinner can have it. Sinner can have it. Yep. That's why we got to tell them. Right. And if, if there's anybody here that don't have Jesus, man, I'm telling you something, you don't know what you're missing. That's there, right. ain't no, there ain't no beer. There ain't no drugs. There ain't no material possession in this earth that can give you what Jesus tell can give you. Right. Right. Man, I'll, get, I'll get something new. I just got a, a boat. I'll be honest yeah. with you. I love that thing, but I'm telling you something, it'll wear off quick. Yeah. It always does. I'm uh -huh. telling you, you know where I go to? 
I just go back to Jesus and Jesus never gets old. He really does. He never gets old. No. He just never gets old. I love him so much. Lately, he's just been moving on my spirit about just, I can't, if I could just speak to him and right here, if I can speak to him in person, give him a hug, I'd give everything I have up. I would give it all up. Amen. That's what I think heaven's going to be like. Yes. Yes. Does that make you excited? Yes. Yes. That'll yes. make you excited, man. Yes. You might not have what you think you got. That's right. Because I'm telling you something, man. Jesus is, it's all about Jesus. All right. It's all about what he's done. He did what he did for you yes. so you can have everything he got for you. Amen. Uh-huh. Amen. Uh huh. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. We don't know what he's got for us, his riches and glory. His riches and glory. Everything He has for us. I mean, it's, we can't even imagine everything He, he wants to give us. That's right. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I was expecting y'all to shout right there. Amen. <laughs> Cover up my silence. Amen. You ever seen Hallelujah. him? Hallelujah. That's my God. That's my God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, yeah. God, about putting that side over there. Let me, Lord, put that on my heart. I don't want to go there. Mm. Mm. All right, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. This is out of honest heart. I'll put that there so I'm gonna forget it. Man, if I can beg from my heart, if I can beg from my heart, when the temptation to grab something from the world comes at you. It's hitting all of us. I know it is. Look, you turn on YouTube, because YouTube's a thing of our life. Facebook's a thing of our life now. I mean, it's every day. But the garbage that's on there, the garbage that's feeding our children, that's feeding our, our, our parents, that's feeding us, do you think that's going to benefit you? Don't let your kids do it. Please, please. Just I just got to say this. I mean, call it what it is, but don't let your kids get into that garbage. Amen. That world ain't going to do nothing for them. Right. I promise you. We've been there. What did it do for us? It didn't do nothing. I don't care about the music. I don't care about any of the, the, the sweet little memes and stuff. I know the memes. I know all that, man. Run from that garbage. Yeah. Even some of these shows that look innocent, man, they're garbage. They're teaching your kids garbage. Yes, they are. I tell my kids, they hear this every day of the week. I say, it's from the world. It's not going to give you anything that's in the Bible. It's no. not going to give you any joy. It's not going to give you true that's love. Right. It's not going to give you anything good that it has because it's made from the world. That's right. It's made from the God of this world. Yeah. Satan. Right. And then, I just got to put this out here. Look, I've been there. I've been tempted. I've been tempted to get off in there and go in there. May it look to the cross. Yeah. It can give you hey, victory man. over the world. The flesh Amen. and the devil. Amen. 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 You need Jesus. If you feel that temptation, fall at the feet of the cross. Yes. Fall at the foot of the cross Amen. and look to Him. God. Yes. Amen. 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 I just got to say that. I had to put that in the man. Look, I just see a lot of my people I love. A lot of people, even church people. Even people I go to work with. Some people that they claim to be Christians every day. I work with them. Run from it. It's not going to do anything for you. I promise you. Well, what am I going to do for entertainment? I don't know. Read your Bible. Go go fishing. Get it. Get away from. Don't don't get in the world stuff. Man, go tell somebody about Jesus. Amen. Tell something that's exciting. It is. Tell, Brother Steve, I know I talk about it all the time. I'm not boasting myself up. I'm just. I love it. It's awesome. You go get to see those kids and talk to them about Jesus. Man, Amen. Steve, you get addicted to it. You get addicted to it. Yes, we do. Whew. Psalms, Psalms 16 and verse 11. I love this one. You always will get a lot of scripture from me. But if I mess up, the scripture ain't going to mess up. Verse 16, or chapter 16, verse 11. Hallelujah. This is speaking about Jesus. But it reminds just listen to it. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. Isn't that something? In your presence yes. is fullness of joy. 
Do you know why you get excited when you talk about Jesus? Do you know why you get excited when you come to church? Because His presence is here. Yeah. Where two or three are gathered in His name, yeah. they're usually in the midst of them. Amen. Do you know who's inside of you? Those that have looked to the cross and they're looking to the cross for their salvation. Do you know who's inside of you? The Spirit of Almighty God. Yeah. That means His presence is with you all the time. That means His joy is with you all the time. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise that's good. God. That's good stuff. Praise God. It took a minute for me to catch that. It took a minute for me to catch that. You've been around me long enough, you understand what I'm saying. Praise God, man. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. Amen. Alright, let's go back to John chapter 15. I want to break this down just a little bit. Fifteen verse, let's see verse, verse nine. Sorry, that was that was kind of like an intro. Yeah, we're still good. Amen. Verse nine. Let's go back to verse eight. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. Mm -hmm. So shall you be my disciples. Brother, Brother Peace was saying something earlier. I said, Brother, you're going, you're going to talk about what I'm talking about a little bit. Listen to what he says. And he's speaking about abiding in the vine. He says, look, I am the vine. And you must continue with me or you're not going to bear fruit. You're not going to bear fruit unless you're looking for what he's got to count. That's basically what he's saying. Colossians 2 and 6. As you have therefore seen Christ Jesus the mm -hmm. Lord, Therefore, walk you in Him. Right? Amen. That's what it's speaking about. It's speaking about yeah. continually looking to Christ That's to right. bear fruit. That's, That's right. the only place you're going to bear fruit. That's the only place you're going to truly have love. It's the only place you're truly going to have joy, patience, long suffering, all of it. Yeah. Even the fruit that Brother James was talking about, the fruit of our works, the fruit of righteousness. Think about that. Man, the Lord was just putting it on me and my mind just can't handle it sometimes. I'm like, it's like a, it's like I was telling the boys, it's like a tree that goes into the ground with all the roots that you're steadily going and connecting and connecting. That's the Word of God. When you have the mindset of the cross, it's just flowing forever. It's connecting all together. See, that's the problem with other, other teachings. It doesn't do that. It leaves stuff out. The way of law, well, how can this be law and then it talks about grace and faith. Well, you got a problem there. It doesn't connect. The puzzle doesn't fit. So I told Brother Curtis one time, he said, it's like all the puzzle pieces are together. Right. It was some, I knew something was missing all the time. But when the cross comes, yeah. it all comes together. Yeah. Come on. The Word comes together. You can yeah. now understand the Word. Yes. It's so much, it's like it's overwhelming at times. Yes, but that's why you need to be in your Word and you need to just, Lord, show it to me. Yeah. And you'll, you, I mean, you'll get excited about it. Yes, amen. It says this, that you, and herein, herein where, is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. Your Father, our, a Christian's responsibility is to glorify God. Our lives are supposed to glorify God. Right? Amen. Yes, amen. Amen. If you're going around moping and cussing everyone out, and doing all this kind of stuff, are you really glorifying the Father? Is that the fruit of the Spirit? Our faith is, our faith is something's happened there. We need to get our faith back on track. Amen. Look to the cross. Yes, Hallelujah. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. Thank you, Lord. How did the Father love the Lord? Think about this. So have I loved you. How did He love us? There you go. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. See, the Father loved us enough to give His Son. The Son loves us. He gave Himself. God just showed me that. Thank you. See what I'm saying? Jesus. Jesus. I love it. He's so good, isn't He? Continue with my love. 
man, you ain't got to tell me to read my Bible. I'm going to read it because I want to know more. You ain't got to tell me to pray. I want to talk to Jesus. Yeah. That's the, way, that's the way the life, that's the way the cross life is. You're no longer doing it because you're trying to appease. No, you're doing it because you love Him. Because He first loved you. Yeah. And He died for you in Calvary. Amen. Thank you, Lord, to show me that too. Thank you. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Man, that got me. I was like, if you keep my commandments, what commandments is He speaking of? You know? You shall abide in my love. You know, I started thinking, you know, he, from Brother James said, where he said, they said, what shall we do to do the works of God? He said, believe on the one who he sent. Man, that got me jumping. Because that's good. we got to believe in what he's done. But I thought about another scripture that kept bugging me. Kept bugging me. Uh, Matthew 22 and 40. I tried to put this together. And I'm like, Lord, help me understand this. Matthew 22 and 40. Actually, 22 and 35. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, or teacher, which is a great commandment of the law? They were trying to, trying to mess with him. Jesus said unto them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is life unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. Listen to this part. On these commandments hang all the law and the prophet. Amen. I'm going to read what Brother Swagger says. This includes the New Testament as well. Just so y'all want to argue with me. I'll go pull out my Jim Swagger commentary. Hey, listen to me. Man, that, that just, think about that. Everything to do with the commandments and the prophets. He says, hang it all on these two. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put it, I'm going to just sum it up. Love the Lord thy God with all your being. Yeah. And love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. Love Amen. your neighbor as yourself. Amen. So I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to, like Brother James, what he said, I'm trying to put that together. You can't do that unless you're looking to Calvary. That's right. That's right. You can't understand what love is. Until you look to Calvary. That's right. You can't understand what that love, because that's the fruit of the Spirit. Think about that fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Mm -hmm. You can't really understand what love is until God, who is love, comes inside and begins to put the love in you. Amen. You know why you can't love that person? Because you're not looking where you need to be looking. That's right. You fail. It's never the cross's fault, it's always our fault. Yeah. We've taken our eyes off the cross. Yeah. We've taken our eyes off of that, off of the vine, the one that, that we need to be connected to, the one that needs to be growing that fruit. Amen? So we take our eyes off that. We, we don't have that joy. We don't have that love. Man, but think about that. God wants us to love, love Him with all of our being. Yeah. Amen? Mm. What kind of God would want someone like me? <laughs> Come man, on, I feel preacher. day after day. I, man, mm. back when I had a boat that wasn't worth anything, I get I'm just gonna tell on myself a minute. Let me take, let me take a drink. Just go brace yourself. <laughs> just brace yourself, because I know y'all don't think this way of me, but I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you know. I had a boat that was just falling apart. And I love that woman because she sat there and she just went with me anyways. She knew she quite looking at it like this ain't gonna work. <laughs> and we took it out there. After I didn't have one boat, the tire blew out, it was all messed up. Went out there, got in the water. I remember me and my dad worked on that boat. We put a rivet in it. Somehow that rivet didn't have a center in it. So we went out there and all of a sudden you just see a stream. <laughs> I told her, I said, give me a piece of gum. Just give me a piece of gum. 
started fixing it on one. Tried to pull, tried to, I got a brand new piece for this motor. I pulled it, wasn't working. Pulled it, wasn't working. I'm just getting mad. I'm just, just, well, I'm still sitting there and saying, Lord, help me. I need your, yeah. I need your peace right now. I need the peace of God right now. I just kept going. I just kept trying. I kept trying. I kept trying. I just kept getting madder and madder. I just, what was it? To put, load the boat up. Got in the boat. I think I fell in the water. <laughs> and I was just, oh, it was right there on my knees. And I'm like, Lauren's looking at me. Kids looking at me. And I'm just, you know, when you first, when you see him, you sit there and you're in sorrow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you truly love Jesus. It breaks your heart. Yeah. Right. You're like, Amen. the kids just see me at the Amen. Because I think about this about the world. I look at people in the world different. Some of these people know that they're sinning. And they're ashamed of their sins. Some people that are drinking. Some people, have been, they've been in church before. They knew the Lord. They fell, up, fell away. Some people are like, I don't want to do this in front of my kids. I don't want to do this in front of my... My, uh, my wife, some of these are Christians doing this stuff. Think about Christians. When you want to sit there and you want to nitpick all these Christians, think about something. Maybe they don't know how to have victory in their lives. Maybe they're just failing and failing and failing. They're on the, they're on the verge of giving up. Okay? Pray for them. Yeah. Quit talking about them. Just pray for yeah, them. Say, man. Lord, how can I lead them to the cross? How can I benefit them? Because I'll tell you something. When I did that, man, I felt this big in front of my kids. I was up like, I feel like a finger in front of my kids. I feel it right now. And I'm like, God, you're going to forgive me. I know you are. You're that good that you're going to forgive me when I put my faith back in you. Yeah. I'm trusting in you, Lord. You're going to forgive me for what I just did. He didn't even leave me, to be honest with you. Yeah. If I would have died, I still would have went to be with him. That's right. Because I, I got his righteousness. Yes. Man. Amen. But I sit there and I'm like, God, you're just so good. Yes, he I sit is. there and I fail and I fail and I just get back up and I look to you again. And he picks me back up. Yes. Lord yeah. God. When you see another Christian fail, don't talk about them. Don't That's pray. right. Just pick them up, pray for them. That's right. And say, look, maybe they, maybe they don't have their focus right. Maybe they just, maybe they're balancing them. But the Lord might be working on them. Yeah. Sometimes it don't, yeah. it don't happen overnight. That's right. Even when we're placing our faith in Calvary, sometimes. Come on, tell it. Something happens. We don't, it don't, I'm, I'm not perfect. Believe it or not. I know you don't believe it. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. But I sit there and I'm like, you know, we're going to fail at times. Yeah. Just get back up. You know, Jesus loves you. He wants you to love Him with all your being. Yes. Amen. Yes, he wants you to love, love your neighbor as yourself. Yes, that's right. I've had that temptation with my real neighbor. Huh? <laughs> and I'm like, Lord Jesus. That was, you know what? I look at it now, I'm like, that was a test. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was. But now yeah, it's man. time for me to be an example. Mm. Yeah. Maybe, now you know what I'm praying now? I pray to the Lord, help me, help me win him to the Lord. Yes. Help me win him to the yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. Just help me win him to the Lord. I'm talking about, I'm talking about someone that would cuss your wife, and cuss your kids. It broke me down. It's, it is. I was so angry at the time. I'm just gonna be honest with you on this. I was so angry I couldn't stand it. I mean, I had thoughts of rage in my head. Yeah, I know y'all think about me this one. I think I'm perfect. I know. I'm kidding. I know y'all don't think that. Uh-uh. Y'all better not think that. Uh-uh. We don't. Anyways, <laughs> brother, thank you, Brother Dale. Thank you, Brother Dale. He's always true. <laughs> he got me out. Uh, you, but you know, I had, I had thoughts so bad of just going out and hurt. Just hurt. Hurt me so bad, I just want to hurt. You ever had that? Yeah. My brother Smart says there's some people you just wish they'd be a semi truck. <laughs> I'm just being honest with you. Yeah. But you know what? I went to work, and this is how the Lord works on me. I went to work, I just turned on my music, started listening, turned on. I used to go through a routine. I listened to Francis Friend, I listened to SDN, and Best of the Cross. Listen to my music, all of a sudden the Lord just starts convicting. Convicting. And they started talking about the love of God. 
and the love that's, that's beyond us yes. that we can have in the cross. Yes. Thank just God. Begin to stay. Lord, help me love this guy. Yes. I don't want to be like the world. Mm -hmm. The world says you got to puff your chest out and you got to yes. beat them in the face. Yes. But the Bible says, my son, the Lord, she was talking about Silas. Let's talk about it. Well, little, what's it yesterday? He said, kids were being mean to him. How he said? Then he said, I'm just going to pray for him. Yes. Pray, God. I'm just going to be nice to him. Pray, God. That's what it's about. Yeah. Even the yeah. kids pick it up. The like kids the kill them. You don't have to. Don't let that hate get in you. Don't let that hate get in you. Because it won't, it won't produce joy. I promise you that. It won't produce joy. When you look to Calvary, that hate goes away. Ooh, that God. love that's, that's of God. Yes. That joy that's of yes, God. Listen, Lord. all these things yes. are of yes, God. Lord, thank you. They're not human. They're not human things. They're of God. They're supernatural things that, that's inside of us that God's producing. Yes. Amen. 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 But that love, you can love someone that hates you. That has done wrong to you. You can love them. You can even pray for them. But I'm telling you something. If it's not, if you're not depending on the Lord's strength, that's it. And looking to His strength, yes. you won't love them. Come on, preacher. You'll look just like the world. Yep. You'll go just like the world. You'll fall into the world. Amen. Amen. I'm just trying to preach something that, that's been on my heart. Guys, this world ain't got nothing for us. Amen. This world is not my home. I'm just yeah, passing this right. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. What's the next verse? Brother Swire, do you know the verse? What's the next verse? Y'all don't know the next verse. Yeah. <laughs> just passing through. That's right. Amen. That's so where I get my it. treasure's all laid up. So now I can my money. I don't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> he said to keep his commandments. We must abide in him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. Turn thank you. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Condemnation. I'm talking about law for a minute. That's why I'm putting up some here. That's why I'm, the mindset of a law. Yeah, I got plenty of time. Well, yeah, I ain't going to be the baddest, right? Okay. But the mindset of a law. A lot of people don't understand the law if you haven't came out of law. Well, most of us probably came out of law, if I'm not mistaken. But me and my family, we were some big knuckleheads, I guess, but we came out of some staunch law, where even salvation was law. Let's be honest. They believed in baptism salvation, right? Yeah. Baptism mm -hmm. salvation. Yep. Jesus' name, baptism only. Yeah. Jesus' name, you got to be baptized. In Jesus' name, you got to speak in tongues to be saved. I tell this, Randall, I'm glad you're here because I want you to back me up. Man, we would go to shouting services. We just shout, shout, and shout. And we talk about it, and I tell him, I just, I think it was about. After some kind of conference or something, we talked about. It. I just told him how, how I felt dead. I felt like something was missing. I felt like I'm failing and stuff. The law, when you're living by law and you're thinking that you have to do this, you got to wear this. Mm -hmm. And this is, if, uh, we're recording, right? If if you're in law and you're in that holiness stuff, it's not true holiness, but you're in the holiness movement. You don't have to live in condemnation. You can live in the freedom Ooh. of the cross. Amen. You don't have to live every day thinking that you have to do this man-made law. Because it is a man-made law. Yeah. Jesus said to look to what He's done. They asked, remember what Brother Peace said. Brother Peace, what I was telling you, what He said. He said that they asked Him, what can we do to do the works of God? He says, believe on Him whom the Lord has sent, or who our Father has sent. Jesus came to die on Calvary. He wants you to believe on Him. Yeah. That alone will produce righteousness and holiness within you. Amen. You don't have to live every day saying, i got to do this. i got to do this. You're going to fail. Come on, First off, it's going to produce hypocrisy. You're going to find yourself being a hypocrite. 
you're going to say, I ain't doing this, but I'm actually doing this. Paul dealt with that in the, I think, Romans chapter 3 to the Jews. He's saying, hey, you that don't steal, do you that teach not to steal, do you steal? Do you remember what Brother Paul said that? Yeah. That's something, ain't it? We can't see when we're being hypocrites. But that's what happens in law. When you're in law, you're hypocritical. When you're in law, you're self-righteous. Because I like what Brother Swagger said. Brother Swagger said that the closer you get to the light, somebody posted this, somebody in here posted this. Now, if I get it right, I love that. It says if you're not close to the light, you're not going to see the things. You're not going to see the sins and the, and the problems in your life. But the closer you get to the light, you're going to see Come the on, problems. Feel it, amen. I could never understand. I'm like, Lord, why am I not seeing all the stuff that I was seeing when I was in law? That's because I wasn't close to the light. Mm -hmm. I wasn't having the light of the glory of gospel of Jesus Christ. It wasn't shining in That's right. my life. And, and I couldn't see it. Yeah. But I tell you, what was there? Condemnation. Mm. I tell you, what was there? Failure. Yes. I was failing every day of the week because you can't live under any kind of law and right. sit there and have joy. You're not going to have joy. That's right. You're not going to have peace. Right. You're not going to have anything. Only That's where that God. comes from is abiding in the vine. Yes. You're going to have to abide in the vine to have joy. Yes. You're going to have to abide in the vine to have love, yes. to have peace. And that's what Jesus did at Calvary. Amen. If you want, it's, it's, it's all about Jesus, all right? He's the vine, right? Yes. Jesus said, I am the vine. But you can't have nothing of Jesus unless you go to what He's done for you. Yes. we got to break it down in, like that. Colossians 2, verses 8 through 10. Oh, it's getting hot in here, or, or it's just me or something. Hallelujah. See, then I'm getting nervous. Washington, chapter 2, verse 8. Well, I appreciate you. Because I couldn't, I just take a little yeah. time. I want to see, I want to show you something that can steal your joy, your love, your peace, the whole fruit of the Spirit. Galatians uh, 5.22 Beware lest any man spoil you. That word spoil means to rob, to steal, to take. Doesn't mean like we spoil our children. Right? Right. Okay. Love you we don't, it ain't like spoiling the children. It's spoil means to steal. See, be, yeah. Beware lest any man steal and rob you. Let's put it there. Rob you through philosophy man's wisdom mm -hmm. through vain deceit and vain deceit after the traditions of men legalism of the holiness that's traditions of men when you pass down I don't care if it's your mama taught you that I don't care if your grandma taught you that I don't care who taught you that that's tradition it's not the word of God it's not the, It's not pointing you to Jesus it's not pointing you to what he's done the whole Bible's pointing you there if it's not pointing you there it's probably tradition too after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. That's it. Listen to that. You're going to be spoiled if it's not after Christ. Amen. Let's just cut the middle out right quick. Beware lest he may spoil you through all this unless it's not after Christ. Right? Amen. Amen. So all that other garbage, it ain't going to work for you. So why are we still dabbling in man's wisdom in the churches? Why are we sitting here, sitting here, Picking up business programs and trying to figure out how to run our churches through business programs. Why are we trying to figure out how to reach people through uh, psychology? Come on. Oh, you need. You, it drives me crazy when I sit there and I hear people say they just need professional help. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Woo, come on. How many people have I talked to that's coming out of drinking and doing drugs? Man, our, our friend Steve, Brother Dale. I don't know if Brother Greg drank or not, probably. My dad's been coming to church, man. That's a miracle in itself. Yes, <laughs> Been free of drinking for you. I I tell you something. Hallelujah. Hey, yes. I see them here, brother. Yes. Listen, I'll tell you something. That's something I thought I would never see as my dad up in the church. Pray, he, raised, he was raised his hand the other day with tears in his eyes. Y'all don't know my dad. Yes. You're talking about someone that loved drinking. You're talking about someone that loved drinking. Man, 
First time in 35 years. <laughs> well, me, my life, 35 years that I've seen this man for a year without drinking. And I've seen him raise his hands in church with tears in his eyes. Man, I was, I was like, Hallelujah. I was choking up. I was about to fall. I'm like, oh my goodness. Praise God. I tell my kids all the time, they probably get tired of hearing. I'm like, do y'all understand what's happening? You understand your papa's in church? Now, Grandma has seen She's been reading her Bible. She's been talking to the Lord. But I know she's happy, too. She's happy. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, but they need professional help. Profe you can't Come give up professional than the one who created you. The one who created you, you said, hey, you know what? I'm going to fix this. I'm going to come and die on Calvary's cross for you. So you can look to me and live. But we got to we are crazy enough to sit there and go by philosophy, man's wisdom, and sit there and say, oh, we need to get them professional help. You got people coming up there and saying, well, psychology's changed a little bit. I'm going to tell you something. If it ain't leading you to, to Calvary, then it's man's wisdom. It's, it's vain deceit. It's traditions of men. It better be pointing you to Jesus. It better be pointing you to what He's done for you. Yeah. If it's not, then run from it. Listen, there's some people I listen to that are, that's not Brother Swagger, that's not Brother Lauren, and sometimes, I mean, there's y'all you know, listen to some commentary you got to keep, be careful with people that study the Word. Is that when you get into this stuff, you got to make sure that they are appointing you to count. That's right. Because everything they do, if they're believing in uh, predestination, let's say predestination, take one of those. That God predestined us before the world began. That He predestined some people to go to hell. I don't, that's not the God I serve. No. That's right. not the God I serve. God says that it's not His will that any should perish. Right. But all right. come right. to repentance. Uh, Amen. 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 But if you, you listen to somebody like that, they're they're carrying their whole doctrine around that. And you gotta be careful because it's some. It's very some. That's why you got you gotta listen to people that know the cross. That's right. That yes. know the cross. You gotta study people that know the cross. Amen. And it's hard. If you don't have that, then you gotta go to the Lord and say, Lord, show it to me. Now, I'm not I'm not the smart, but you can show it to me, Lord. Maybe I just said it. Amen. Amen. Anyways. So we want to follow his commandment. He said, go back to John. I'm about to, I'm about to burn, guys. I do want to tell you, I love y'all. I do love y'all. Y'all are my family. I wanted y'all to know that. I don't get to talk to every one of y'all before I get out of service, but I do love y'all. There's, this is some of the greatest stuff we have mm -hmm. on this earth right here. Yes. It is. Right here. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. I don't know if it was a dream. I think it was a dream I had. Maybe I was daydreaming. I don't know. <laughs> but I was dreaming that we were out by a tree and we were having service. I think it was a dream I had. We was out by a tree and we were having service. And it's just, the only thing I think about is, at least I got my church name. You know what I mean? I mean, no matter where we go, we're the church. Yeah. No matter what happens in this nation, we're the church. Amen. No matter where we go, we're the church. Wherever we go, we got the Lord with us. Amen. We can have joy yeah. no matter what comes on this earth. We can have peace no matter what comes on this earth, unless you're not following after Christ, you're not following after what He did. I know we hear that, we, it could be, and, and as a human mind, we like to make it a cliche. It's not a cliche. It's Bible. It's Bible. From the beginning where he's told about, you know, his her seed shall bruise his heel. That's the beginning of Genesis. And at the end it says, I saw a lamb that was slain. That's in the Revelation. That's from the beginning to the end. I mean, it's all through the Bible. It's pointing to the cross. It's pointing to the cross. That's what he did for us. Not just so you can go to heaven, but so you can fight the world, the flesh, and the devil. Amen. Listen, I'm not going to sit here and beat up on anybody. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to tell every one of us, we all need it. Yes, yes, we don't do. look at somebody and say, well, he must be talking to them. No, I'm talking to every one of us. Uh, amen. 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 I've amen. been there. I've sit there and I'm like, hey, Lauren, he's talking to you. And she's like, oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> really, I was the one needing to hear it because I was doing that. Amen. amen. I was the one needing that. Because I'm going to tell you something. 
If we do not look to the cross, we don't understand this, we don't depend on His strength, you're going to fall to the world, the flesh, and the devil. Amen. Man, this is a time of deception as have never been seen before. The churches are deceiving nonstop. I told Brother Curtis the other day that I was on Facebook, and on Facebook it keeps popping up these videos of these churches. Just church after church after church. And I said to him, I said, you know, I'm going to listen to them, see what they say. Man, I'll tell you something. Out of 20 of them, not one of them had it right. Mm -hmm. Out of 20 churches, not one of them had it right. And I ain't trying to be critical. I'm just saying it was some weird stuff I've ever seen in my life. You talk about some demonic stuff going on in some churches. Come on, kill it. One of them where this guy's in this priestly robe and he's raising his hands and they start screaming, lowers his arms, they stop. And I'm over here like, this ain't of God. You can just feel it. It's not of God. No. I mean, we're in a great deception right now of going throughout the churches. You are the beacon of light on this earth. Yes. You're holding the light. Jesus is the light. Yes. And you've got to present that light to the world. These yes. people don't know. I know I'm going all over the place, but I'm trying to get it clear. Is guys, we Amen. have the message. Yes. We have the way. Amen. Just go wherever you need to go. Wherever you... Let's say you go on a fishing trip, a camping trip. You see someone that needs Jesus, just talk to them about Jesus. Yes, yeah, right. If the Lord leads you to talk to them about Jesus, talk to them about Jesus. They may talk to them about what He's done. Yes. When I say Jesus, I'm talking about all of them. But we got to make ourselves clear. The point of it is, is that, what, imagine if everyone who knew the message of the cross will go out and do that. Every time they went out, Every time, every place they went out, that they seen someone the Lord convicted them to talk to, they would go talk to her and they would go tell them about the mm -hmm. cross. They would go tell them what Jesus has really done for them. Yeah. You imagine how many people would be saved? How many people would be touched by the yeah. gospel? Amen. You don't know how many people you're touching. My brother Greg was saying, you don't know how many people you're touching. There's people I've talked to, it's kind of funny because you sit and you talk to them day after day after day, and they'll still be all full of the world, making fun of you. I have some guys making fun of me about because I tell them I don't drink, and they, they want me to go drinking with them. I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, I see what drinking does to you, and I know what, if they're yeah. going to bring me joy, it's going to bring me hangovers right. and chaos and sorrow, and yeah. they make fun of me. I'm over like, you crazy. Y'all don't know what y'all don't know what true joy is. Y'all don't know what true happiness in the Lord is. If people look at they look at us and they think that it's just, oh, you just going to church, my friend. I ain't going to church. I'm going to Jesus Come on. every day of the week. And I'm not yeah. talking to you, yes. young folk. My my yes. wife right here. I ain't saying I'm seeing you all the time. So I'm gonna preach to you for a minute. Man, you need Jesus, man. You gotta keep him every day of the week. I know you might. You have him. But man, you gotta hang on to him. There were some other young folk. Ain't no other young folk right here. Listen, y'all got it worse than we got. Y'all got YouTube. You got all this stuff. When Jesus says, "Don't look at that. Don't watch that. Turn it off. Run." Amen. Him. And sit there and say, "Jesus, help me. Mm. Lord, I'm looking to what you did for me. That's help right. me overcome it. Yeah. Help me overcome it. Because y'all got temptations flooding y'all yes. that's unsurpassable that I didn't have when I was a kid." There were some temptations, but I'm telling you something. You gotta, hey, you gotta look to the Lord. You gotta get Jesus. You gotta, you gotta hang on to Jesus. I'm trying to say it right. Amen. You gotta hang on to what He's done for you. Amen. Amen. If it ain't of Jesus, it ain't good for you. It Amen. ain't gonna benefit you. I promise you. Take it from someone that's been here 35 years. You can talk to some of these people who've been here longer than me. I ain't gonna say their age, but you can talk to them that's been here longer than me. Tell, ask them some of the chaos that's in their life before they knew Jesus. Don't think that you can dabble into drinking and in the world and play around with the world, grab a little here, grab a little there, and I'm just going back to the cross and have fun. And that stuff will grab a hold of you. It'll grab a hold of you. Don't play with Jesus. He wants all of your, Amen. or none of you. Amen. He said he wants you to love him with your whole being. Yes. Amen. 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 Amen.
Thank you, Lord. Praise God.